Hold up your Bible, whatever you have it on. Those of you at home, those of you here, get rid of all distractions. I have a right now word. What will we be doing in heaven? What will we be doing in heaven? Hold up your Bible. Say it with me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. My mind is open, alert, and ready. In Jesus' name, I'll leave here today stronger, better. In Jesus' name, amen. One more time. Can you think of for a revival of the Bible? Say that with me. A revival of the Bible. Now, you know I'm doing that on, on purpose, right? Because the Bible is under attack. The Bible is under attack. People are saying that it's not relevant for today. They want to modernize the Bible. They're coming up with all new kinds of Bibles. And, you know, my brother and sister, I don't want to modernize the Bible. I, I want to know the Bible, and it will set me free. As it was written, you know, thousands of years ago, Amen. All right, so open your Bible today. Uh, what will we be doing in heaven? And we'll have a few scriptures here. I, I want to share with you a foundation, and then we're going to get right into five things we will be doing in heaven. Now, why would I teach on what will we be doing in heaven? Well, I think it's apropos for where you and I are at right now and the times that we're living. Teaching on heaven, number one, brings encouragement. Teaching on the subject of heaven brings encouragement. Number two, why would I talk about it this weekend? It brings empowerment. It brings encouragement, and it brings empowerment. Number three, why would I teach on the subject of heaven today? It brings fulfillment fulfillment. When you know that, that where we're at today is not our home, right? When you know that we're just passing through, when you know this is temporary, wow, it brings encouragement, empowerment, uh, and it will bring comfort and fulfillment. Those four things. I think we need to uh, live a life that's fulfilling. We don't want to waste our life. I think we need all of us to be comforted right now, I think all of us need, you know, encouragement right now like never before. And we all need to be empowered, not, not lose our energy and lose our drive, but stir up that gift that's on the inside of us and believe more, expect more, and do more for the kingdom of God. Amen? And then the world, I know you and I know this, the world paints heaven as boring. The world uh, and the culture of our world, they always paint heaven as boring. Why is it always just a bunch of clouds, and it's all white, and they all have white robes, and they have a harp, and they're just floating around like Casper the ghost? To me, that would be hell. I wouldn't want to go to heaven if that's what it was. I'm on a cloud. I can't even play a harp, right? Right? I, that, and, but the world paints heaven as boring. Well, that's, that's wrong. They paint heaven as a metaphor. Most of the world doesn't believe that there's a heaven. They see it as a metaphor. They make it mystic and mysterious. Well, I want to go into the Word of God today and find out clearly from the Scriptures what will we be doing in heaven. Heaven is a real place. Heaven is a real planet. We don't have time to cover all of the subject, but Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Earth originally was a reflection of heaven. Earth was a planet, so wouldn't heaven be a planet? In the beginning, he created the heaven and the earth. Now, there are three heavens according to Scripture, right? There's the atmosphere, there is the stars, uh, and then the galaxy, and then thirdly, it's a planet. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Earth was to be a reflection 
of heaven. So it's a real place. Jesus said in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. We don't have to be afraid of the times we're living in or of the future. He said, let not your heart be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you. Heaven is a real place. Uh, heaven is a real place. And Jesus is preparing it for you and me. So uh, that's kind of an introduction. Let's get right into the word and see what the word says. Amen. Luke 21, 28. Now, Jesus just listed end time events, and it really portrays where you and I are living right now. You say, Pastor, I've heard all my life, Jesus is coming back. What makes it different? It's different now. Because as you and I were growing up, uh, things like this would happen from time to time. Uh, they're not happening as quickly and frequently as they are now. Secondly, uh, never has there ever been a worldwide plague like COVID right now. So it's different now than it's ever been you and I growing up. So Jesus said, when you see these things begin to occur, get high. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, praise God. Just all checking, y'all are still with me. Praise God. Now, when these things begin to occur, look up. Look up. He's talking physically, look up and lift up your heads. That, that look will affect what's in our head. That, that what we're, our perspective will determine our emotions. So he says, look up, lift up your heads because your redemption or deliverance is drawing near. So Jesus said, as you're in the last days, the last of the last, he said, you should be looking up to what? Heaven. You should be looking at heaven. You should be focusing on the afterlife. You should be focusing on, somebody said, be too heavenly minded, no earthly good. I don't agree with that. I think the more heavenly minded I am, the more earthly good I'll be when I know what I'm going to be doing in heaven for eternity. So when you see all this going on right now, Jesus said, look up, look to heaven and it will affect your thought life, your head, what's between our ears, our brain, and spiritually, our mind. Because your redemption is drawing near. We're, we're just laying a foundation why I would teach on this today. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. Set your mind, so we have to have a mindset. Set your mind, don't let it wander. An anxious mind is anxious because it's a wandering mind. A fearful mind is afraid because it's a wandering mind. Uh, we, we had one of our prayer requests, remember? She said, pray for me that my, that my mind won't wander and my faith won't waver. Wow. Uh, set your mind and keep it set on what is above. What would that be? Heaven. The higher things, not on things that are on the earth. Everything on the earth will, will fade away, will dissolve, rust away, and eventually this earth will be destroyed by a fire, and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. So why would I teach on heaven? Because that's a great prescription how you and I can live in the times we're living in without fear or dread. It should bring comfort, encouragement, empowerment, and fulfillment. It should bring stability and security and confidence. So when you see all this going on, look up, look to heaven. Uh, he said, have a mindset and keep it set on things that are above. Next verse, guys, can you help me out today? For as far as this world is concerned, you have died. And your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. Oh, I like that. Everybody say mindset. All right, next verse, guys. Revelation 21, verse 3. Again, the world likes to make heaven boring, mystical, a mystery, mystic, a metaphor. But it's a real place. Revelation 21, verse 3. Heaven is where God lives. Heaven is where God lives. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, the home of God is now among men. The home of God. What is heaven? God's home. 
Uh, look, the home of God is now among men, and he will live with them. What? Men, women, humanity. He will live with them, and they will be his people. Oh, I like that. You ever heard that before? Well, well, those people aren't our people, right? Well, that's just not our people. Well, I'll tell you what, you and I, if we're born again, put our trust and faith in Christ, we are God's people. No matter the color of our skin or our back, background or our upbringing, right in the family of God. So look, the home of God is among men now, and he will live with them, and they will be his people. Yes, God himself will be among them. Next verse, guys. Verse 4. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There'll be no sighing and no crying, no sin, no strife, no sorrow, no cancer, no pain. Look at this. He'll wipe away all tears from your eyes. There'll be no more death, no more sorrow, you heard the prayer request that, uh, of the one that lost their son and the father in the last month. He'll wipe away all tears from our eyes. There'll be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. All of that is gone forever. I love it, don't you? Forever. Uh, next verse, we're talking about heaven. Uh, Psalm 53, verse 1. Heaven is God's home. Heaven is where God lives. Only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. Whew. Only fools say in their heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, and their actions are evil, and not one of them does good. Next verse. God looks down from where? Where is God? In heaven. Notice a singular. Many times you'll see heavens, and other times you'll see heaven. There are three heavens according to the Bible. God looks down from heaven on the entire human race. Notice he looks down. So heaven is up, right? Actually, actually the Bible says that heaven, the planet, is in the northern part of the universe. Wow, uh, you can check that out. Just go and look up the word north in, in your concordance, and it will give you all kinds of scriptures talking about heaven be, being in the north side of the universe. God looks down from heaven on the entire race. He looks to see if anybody at Church on the Rock is really wise. And we is. Because what? We're seeking God. What is it? Uh, wise to seek God. Next verse, but no, all have turned away. All have become corrupt. Where's God? In heaven. What's he observing? The human race, down upon the human race. But no, all have turned away. All have become corrupt. No one does good, not a single person. Next verse, we're simply establishing that there is a real heaven. It's a real place. God created it. It's God's home. It's where God lives, and it's above us in the heavens. Psalm 123, verse 1, Unto you do I lift up my eyes, O you God, who are enthroned in the heaven. God's throne is in heaven. Heaven is a real place. God is a real deity, and he has a throne. And what's he doing? Observing the human race, looking for those who are not a fool, but those who are wise. Wise people still seek him. Yeah. Uh, and next, guys, let's go next. Uh, so what are we going to be doing in heaven? Uh, uh, five things all start with the letter R. Uh, five things start with the letter R. What will we be doing in heaven? Well, number one, we'll be reunited with our family and our friends. We'll be reunited with our family and our friends. I, I, my, my mother's in heaven. My father's in heaven. My brother's in heaven. My sister's in heaven. Uh, my, my grandmother, who held me in her arms, uh, they tell me, speaking in the Spirit, praying in tongues over me when I was a baby, she's in heaven. I, 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 I'm excited about heaven. I'm looking forward to heaven because it helps me live in this life right now without fear. Uh, I know that heaven is waiting for you and me. And what are we going to be doing? Well, we're going to be reunited with our family and our friends, the Scripture guys. 
1 Thessalonians 4.17. Uh, then the rest of us who are still alive at the time of the rapture will be caught up with them into the clouds to meet the master. Oh, we'll be walking on air. How cool will that be? And then there will be one huge family reunion with a master. Oh, come on, somebody. That should thrill you today. Oh, I love it. Uh, talking about the rapture. We'll be walking on air, and, and there'll be one huge family reunion with the master. The next, guys, next, please. The first Thessalonians 4.18. So uh, reassure uh, when, you, when you know that heaven is real and, and you're, you're prepared for heaven, you're not living scared, but you're prepared. And when you know that, it gives you encouragement, it gives you empowerment, it gives you fulfillment, and it gives you comfort. So reassure one or another, why is your pastor who loves you, everyone here, everyone online, why would I be teaching this? Because I want to bring you comfort today. I want to bring you reassurance today. I want to help you have stability and strength as you lead your family through. So reassure one another with these words. Uh, next, guys, next, number two, what will we be doing in heaven? Not only a reunion with our family and friends, but we'll be rewarded for our faithfulness. We'll be rewarded for our faithfulness. Scripture for that, guys. Next, please. John 12, 26, Jesus said, if any of you want to serve me, if any of you want to serve me, then follow me. Then you'll be where I am, ready to serve at a moment's notice. What are we going to be doing in heaven? Serving God. See, our dream team, a life of service here is just a, a pre, a, 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 a getting ready, getting prepared. Because we're not going to be on a cloud with a harp, uh, just wasting eternity. We're going to be serving God in heaven. There's a work for us to do. There's going to be a work for us to do. We're going to be serving God. And he said, those who serve him in this lifetime, you'll be rewarded in the next. Oh, I like it. If any of you want to serve me, then follow me. Then you'll be where I am, ready to serve at a moment's notice. The Father will honor. Heaven is where you're going to get honored. You may have done things down here for God and nobody saw it, nobody recognized it, nobody thanked you for it, but don't stop serving because you weren't appreciated here like you wanted to be. Because over there, over there, you're going to be in heaven honored for everything you did, the prayers, uh, the serving, the sharing, the sowing, the giving, uh, 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 the, the uh, assignment that you had here uh, as you did it faithfully, you will be honored and rewarded over there. So number one, what will we be doing in heaven? You'll have a reunion with your family and with your friends. Uh, and then number two, you'll be rewarded You'll be rewarded. You'll be honored there for your faithfulness down here. I'll tell you, faithfulness is huge, isn't it? Uh, faithfulness, the Bible says a faithful person will abound in blessing. I, I, I say stay faithful. Stay steady. Hold your course. Don't quit. Don't be weary in well-doing. For in due time, you'll receive your harvest. Next, guys, next. Number three you will receive your inheritance. Down here on earth, you, you know what that means, that when uh, maybe uh, you're part of a family and your mother or father have passed away and they've left you an inheritance, okay, an inheritance. Now, for me, uh, my mom and dad, my dad, I remember when he passed away, uh, he was 56 years old, way too young. I remember when he passed away, uh, I, I, my mother, he had just gone to Kmart and bought a refrigerator. And, and when, when we went home for the funeral, after the funeral, my mother said, Dave, can you load the freezer up, take it back to Kmart, get the money back, because I need the money just to exist. My father left me no money, no earthly thing, but you know what? He left me a spiritual inheritance that I'm so thankful for today. 
And you might say, yeah, but Pastor, we missed out. Well, you won't miss out over there. You won't miss out over there because you're going to receive your inheritance. Let me give you some scriptures. Next, guys, please. Colossians 3, 24. Knowing. We'll choose what we know today. Knowing with certainty. In uncertain times, we can live with certainty. Knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord and not from men that you will receive the inheritance, which is your real reward. The one whom you are actually serving, who are we serving today? Really the Lord, right? When we serve people, we're really serving the Lord through serving people, right? Know this with all certainty so you and I can be certain and confident in times of uncertainty. With all certainty that it is from the Lord, not from men, that you will receive an inheritance in heaven, yeah, which is your real reward. The one whom you are actually serving is the Lord Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Say it with me. I have an inheritance that's out of this world. Get it? Out of this. I worked hard on that, y'all. Uh, next verse, please. Next verse. 1 Peter 1.4. 1 Peter 1.4. And we have a priceless. So that means anything, anyone could leave to you in this world does not compare to the inheritance God has for you in the next world. It's priceless. You can't put a price on it. Oh my, think about that. That blows our mind, right? And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept where? In heaven. You have an inheritance that's out of this world. You have an inheritance you can't put a, a, a money tag on. It's priceless. Think about this now. It's an eternal inheritance. It's not just when you go through the pearly gates and God gives you a gift. This inheritance goes on for eternity because God is an eternal good God. And God doesn't stop being good to you at the rapture or your death or the second coming. God will be good to you forever. And the inheritance will never end. That's why it's priceless. Oh, my goodness. Beam me up, Scotty. I want to go on this load. And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that's kept where? In heaven for you. It's pure. It's undefiled. It's beyond the reach of change. Wow. You know, uh, everything's changing. Bob Dylan wrote a song about change. Everything's changing. But guess what? Your inheritance, nobody, the Republicans or the Democrats or the Libertarians or the rich or the poor or the educated, uneducated, can take it away from you. Uh, no government, no jurisdiction, uh, no enemy, no foe or friend or family member can take it away from you. It doesn't decrease. It only increases. Uh, beyond the reach of change and beyond decay. Where's your inheritance? In heaven. I like it. So what are we going to be doing in heaven? Number one was we're going to have a reunion. Oh, I, I, I like family reunions down here. I know you all do too. But up there, it's going to be one big, huge. You're going to sit down and talk to the Apostle Paul. You're going to sit down and talk to Moses. You're going to talk to Ruth. You're going to talk to Esther. Maybe for a 1,000 years, you'll hang out with Esther at a coffee shop. You say, Pastor, are there coffee shops in heaven? Let me tell you something. Yeah. There, there's not going to be anything less there than there is here. There, there can't be anything less there than there is here. For we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that's kept in heaven for you. Uh, it's pure, it's undefiled, it's beyond the reach of change and decay. Next, guys, please. First Peter 1 Peter 1.4. Born anew, you can get born again, into a what? Inheritance. Born again into an inheritance, which is beyond the reach of change and decay. It's imperishable. It's unsullied, unfading. Where is it? It's reserved. 
in heaven. It's waiting for you. Wow. God knows your likes. God knows your taste. God knows what uh, lights your fire to, to steal from the doors. Come on, baby, light my fire. God, God knows what lights your fire. God, God knows what excites you. God knows your taste. Listen, God wired you. And, and why would heaven be any less than earth? Sometimes if we listen to the culture, uh, they downgrade, they degrade heaven. And I'm here to tell you that we serve an amazing God who's eternally good and eternally releasing his favor on your life. Favor doesn't stop here on this earth. God's goodness doesn't stop here on this earth. Ephesians chapter 1 says his favor continually unfolds throughout eternity. Whoa. As Gomer Pyle says, shazam. Uh, and next, guys, let's go next. Matthew 25, 34. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father. How many blessed folk I have here? Of the, and you favored. How many favored? It's good to say, right, we're, we're blessed and highly favored. That's what the word says. Uh, that then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, you favored of God, appointed, appointed to eternal salvation. To what? Inherit. You've been appointed to an inheritance. You are highly blessed and favored, and that does not end at the grave or your death. Receive as your own. Please look at this, family. Those of you online, please look at this. Those of you in C-O-T-R-V-R, look at this. You will receive your own kingdom. Uh, aren't you, aren't you uh, 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 kings and priests, right? Aren't you a royal priesthood? Uh, he's the king of kings. Wow, think about it now. So this is the Bible. This is not blunt. This is the Bible. I hope I'm blowing your mind. Uh, God has a place for you to rule and reign with him throughout eternity. You're not going to be on the corner of a block in, in a shanty. No way. Uh, the Bible says if we endure to the end, we will rule and reign with Christ throughout eternity. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, you favored of God, appointed to eternal salvation, inherit, receive as your own kingdom, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You are not a mistake. God has a plan for your life. Don't miss it. God has a will. God has a plan. God has a call on your life. Don't miss it. Next, guys. Next. Number four, what's going to happen? What are we going to be doing in heaven? Uh, can you help me? Number one, we're going to have a great reunion. Number two, we're going to receive for our faithfulness. Faithfulness matters. This, this going to church once a month and going to hack it. You might be in a shanty on the one side of uh, The number three was receive your inheritance, your kingdom. Number four is receive your role and your responsibility. Uh, verse on that, guys, is Matthew 25, 21. The master was full of praise, and he said, well done, thou good and what? Faithfulness is huge to God. You've been faithful in handling this small account. You've been faithful in handling this small account. So now I will give you now, this is the story of the talents. Y'all remember that? Faithful with little, God makes you uh, faithful over much. One translation says he puts you in charge over much. This is a type and shadow of eternity, heaven. The master was full of praise. He said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together.
How I'm faithful with money now will determine what I do then. How I'm faithful with my gifts and talents and resources now will determine my responsibility then. How I'm faithful with what God's given me, my time, my talent, my treasure, how I'm faithful with that now, how I manage it and charge over it will determine our responsibilities in heaven. We will have responsibilities. We will have a work to do. We will have an assignment to do. We will keep on serving God up there. Wow. Next verse, guys, or number five, as the team gets ready. Number five, uh, what will we be doing in heaven? We're going to be rejoicing. Whoa, we're going to be rejoicing. Now, this is really cool because we're going to be rejoicing and, and we're going to be singing. Now, think about this now. We will all be singing on key. Can you imagine? Oh, none of us will be tone deaf. We'll all be singing on key. We'll all be in harmony. Yeah, because it's perfect praise up there. It's a perfect world up there, right? Uh, look what the scripture says in Revelation 15 2. Then I saw what seemed to be a glassy sea. Uh, that's always referring to a congregation. Then I saw what seemed to be a glassy sea blended with fire, and those who come off victorious from the beast and from his statue and from the number 666, the number of the beast, the tribulation, corresponding to his name, were standing beside the glassy sea with harps of God in their hands. This is talking about the believers in heaven, that the, the harps of God in their hands. Next, guys, verse 3. And they sang the song of Moses. This is in heaven. They sang the song of Moses. Think about it. We'll all be on key. We'll all be on pitch. We'll all be singing perfectly. Can you imagine the sound of millions of people singing together the song of Moses, the praises of God, and we're all perfectly in tune in pitch on key. <laughs> and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, the song of the Lamb, saying, Mighty, marvelous are your works. O Lord God, the omnipotent, righteous, just, and true are your ways. O sovereign of the ages, king of the nations. Wow. Next, verse 4. Who shall not receive or reverence, excuse me, who will not reverence and glorify your name? So see, during worship and praise now, you want to enter in uh, online, small group, watch part. You want to enter in with your family. You want to enter because you're practicing. Who shall not reverence and glorify your name? Oh, Lord, giving you honor and praise in worship. There'll be no rock stars. Uh, there'll be no egos in the worship and the praise. Nobody singing off note. Nobody, you know, wanting the spotlight. No, it'll all be pointed on Jesus, our Redeemer, our Savior. Who, who, who shall not reverence and glorify your name? Oh, Lord, giving you honor and praise and worship, for you are holy. And all the nations shall come and pay homage and adoration to you. For your just judgments, your righteous sentences and deeds have been made known and have been displayed. He's a just God. Revelation 15, 5. After this, I looked and the sanctuary of the tent of the testimony, where are we doing this at? In heaven, was thrown wide open. What will we be doing in heaven? We're going to be rejoicing like we've never rejoiced before. We're going to hear the praises of God like we've never heard it before. Next, guys. How do I get there? How do I get to heaven? Heaven's a real place. It's created uh, for God and his family. What will we be doing there? We looked at the five R's. That's just a, a glimpse. How do I get there? Next verse, guys. Here's how I get there. Romans 1.17. The good news tells us that God makes us what? Ready for heaven. If I'm prepared, I don't have to live scared. Uh, the good news, the Bible uh, tells us that God makes us ready for where, church? Heaven. Makes us right in God's sight when we put our faith and trust in Christ to save us. 
This is accomplished from start to finish by faith, putting our trust in him. As the scripture says, the man who finds life will find it through real life, eternal life. We'll find it through putting our trust, not in man, not in a religion or institution, but putting our trust in God. Next verse, this is how I get there. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. For we know that when this tent, that's our body, we live in now is taken down. In other words, when we die and leave these bodies. Now, you do know uh, people ask the question we're going to look at in just a minute. Uh, we probably don't have time to look at it in just a minute. But uh, somebody says, well, 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 people know me in heaven. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, what will I look like? What you look like now is a blueprint for what you're going to look like then. But, but the difference is, is that you're going to be uh, not a different person than you already are, but you're going to be a perfected person of who you are. Up there, your body will be perfect. Uh, up there, your talk will be perfect. Up there, your personality will be perfect. Up there, your emotions will be perfect. Up there, your deeds and acts will be perfect. Uh, you won't be a different person. You'll be known as you are now, except up there, you'll be made perfect. Never lose your temper. Never cuss, curse, get mad, anxious, fearful, worried. Never. Never. For, for we know that when this tent, our body we live in, is taken down, when we die, leave these bodies, we will have a wonderful new body. Where? In heaven. Homes that will be ours forever, made for us, oh my goodness, by God himself and not by human hands. Thanks for watching this week's message. Here at Church on the Rock, our purpose is to help you know God better. And one of those ways is through Growth Track. We have a four-step process online that you can take anytime or maybe consider joining us in person. But to take your next step and to find out all the incredible things we have to offer here at Church on the Rock, I encourage you to go over to cotr.org slash online, or you can email us at online at cotr.org. And never forget, God is for you.